I have often been asked how I am able to get a ThinkPad for as low of a price as I often do. And while part of that has to do with me living in the United States, where getting older used machines is pretty easy and affordable, I usually find good deals on sites like eBay and sometimes in local listings as well because a given laptop has various issues or it's untested. Sometimes I'll pay a very low price for a laptop and find that there's nothing wrong with it, as was the case with the ThinkPad X240 I recently picked up for only $65, complete with a power adapter, batteries, and storage. Other times I get things that have a little bit more wrong with them, and one of the most common issues that I see with ThinkPads on eBay are damaged screens. Older ThinkPads like the T420 and T430, as well as some of the newer, thicker models like the T440P, the L-Series, and the P-Series, make it pretty easy to replace the screens. The process is sometimes as simple as popping off the front display bezel and then removing a few screws. Unfortunately, in Lenovo's efforts to make ThinkPads thinner and lighter in recent years, it has become a little bit more difficult to replace the screens in newer models. However, after working on a few of these myself, I've found that the process is still fairly easy as long as you are gentle and patient. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace the display in many of the newer ThinkPads out there. This process will be pretty much the same for most of the thinner ThinkPads nowadays. Like I said, some of the thicker machines out there still use a hard plastic bezel to keep the display in place. However, many of the thinner models since the T440 have used a thin outer plastic sheet for the outer bezel. It's held in place by adhesive strips, which makes it kind of tricky to remove, and Lenovo often suggests just replacing the bezel with a new one after servicing the display. Replacements don't seem too expensive, however, most of them are being shipped directly from China. So if you live in the United States like I do, that can mean several weeks or even months of waiting. With the current situation that's going on, I think that a few weeks or even a few months is kind of optimistic. I've seen a few replacement bezels being sold from within the United States, but many of these have an insane price markup on them. And I don't think anyone wants to pay this much money for a glorified piece of plastic. Because of these issues, I'm going to do my best to salvage the original display bezel and the adhesive strips that it came with when replacing the display in my laptop. The laptop in question today is a T440S I picked up a while ago. This one has a damaged screen that we need to replace. Before getting started, you want to make sure that the laptop has been disconnected from the power adapter and that the external battery, if there is one, has been removed. Then you want to power the laptop on, head into the BIOS, go to Config, and then head to the Power Settings. Then go down to Disable Internal Battery and select this option. Once you've hit Enter, the laptop will power down and you will be able to safely work on the laptop. If for whatever reason you can't access the BIOS, maybe because of the damaged screen or whatever, or if you just want to be extra careful, it may be a good idea to remove the bottom cover from your ThinkPad and disconnect the internal battery from the motherboard. We're doing this because we don't want any power going to the laptop while we are working on it. Having a battery or power adapter plugged in, even when the laptop is powered down, while we're working on the screen can lead to the backlight fuse being blown. This will make the laptop essentially useless unless you are really good at soldering or you replace the motherboard. Once the laptop has been powered down and all sources of power have been removed, we can start to proceed with the disassembly. For some first-timers, it might be easier to do all of this if you disconnect the entire display assembly from the base of the laptop. However, in my opinion, it's still pretty easy to do this process with everything still attached, and this only saves us time since we don't have to take everything apart and get the entire base removed. So, ultimately, it's up to you. The first thing that we have to do is get the outer bezel off. Since it's held down by adhesive strips, you will want to get a plastic spudger, or maybe even just your fingernail, and see if you can find a large enough gap around the bezel to start prying it up. I usually have the best luck at one of the bottom corners. Once you have a good grip on the bezel, you can start to peel it up. With a little bit of effort, it should start to come off. And after a while, you should be able to easily get the rest of the bezel removed. For me, the safest method to do this is to apply even pressure on both sides as they start to come up, since the two sides separate from the corner. It's okay for the bezel to be bent, but be careful not to completely fold the bezel onto itself, as it will leave a mark that is very hard to get rid of. With a bit of patience, the bezel will slowly work its way off. Once you have the bezel off, find some place where you can lay it flat, with the back of it facing up. If you were lucky, all of the adhesive strips may have come off with the bezel. However, sometimes a few of the strips will stick to the inside of the display assembly. You can see on the bezel that there are several outlines showing where each of the adhesive strips should go. So, if any of the strips didn't stick to the bezel, 
carefully remove them from the inside of the display assembly and press them down onto the outlined areas. Try not to let the strips twist or fold, or the bezel may not stick back on correctly later. Now we have to remove the internal bezel. But first there are four screws that we have to remove. These screws are doing double duty. They're holding down the internal bezel and the screen itself. Once the screws have been removed, you can start to gently lift up on the inner bezel and the tabs holding it in will start to become undone. Sometimes just using your fingernail will get the job done, other times you might need a little bit of help from a spudger. Just don't use a flat tip screwdriver or you might scratch the plastic. Be gentle and try not to force the bezel loose or you might break a few of the tabs. Once the first couple of tabs have started to become undone, you should be able to easily go around the rest of the display assembly and have everything pop off. Once everything has become undone, you should be able to remove the internal bezel. And now we can get to the screen. For me, the easiest way to get the old screen out is to lay it down on the keyboard area, and then locate the display cable. You can pull the cable directly outwards from the connector, and once it's free, you can get rid of the old screen. Get your new screen, in my case this is a 1080p IPS display that I picked up, and line it up in the same position that you had the old screen in. And once you're confident that everything's lined up correctly, gently push the cable into the display connector. You definitely want to make sure that the cable is fully inserted so we don't have issues later, but don't be too forceful so that you don't damage the display connector or the screen itself. Once you're sure the cable is in, lift the screen up and line up the mounting brackets with the appropriate spots on the display assembly. Before proceeding with reassembly, now might be a good time to make sure our new screen is working. Eh, good, it's on and it's functioning. Once that's done, get your inner display bezel and line everything up. I find it's easiest to start at the bottom where there's these two small parts that stick out. Once those are in, you can begin working your way around. Gently push the tabs back into position. Everything should pretty gently snap back into place. And then use your fingers to feel around the outside to make sure everything's lined up correctly. It's also important to check the bottom lip of the display assembly that sinks below the laptop base, as I've seen a few people miss these spots when reassembling the screen. If you missed any of these tabs, just gently push on them and they should snap back into place. Once the inner bezel is back in, you can get the four screws that hold the screen in place and tighten them. Now comes the most annoying part of reassembly in my opinion, the outer bezel. Like I said, you want to make sure all of the adhesive strips are in the correct place as shown on the inside of the bezel. I've seen a lot of people throw these strips away or leave them on the old screen, and then the outer bezel won't stay on correctly once it's back together. Once you have the strips in place, gently line up the sheet in one of the corners, and sometimes, if it helps, line it up on the other sides too, but don't press down yet. Once you're confident that everything is aligned correctly, you can begin to press down on the bezel and the adhesive strips will do their job. You might have to do a little bit of pushing around to get everything aligned perfectly, and sometimes no matter how hard you try, you can never get the bezel 100% perfectly, but in my opinion, as long as you can't really notice it, it should be fine. As long as nothing's terribly misaligned, it's not a huge deal. Once everything's aligned and you're satisfied with your work, congratulations, you should have a working ThinkPad without having to buy a new bezel or display assembly. At this point, if you unplugged the internal battery, you can plug it back in. Once you plug the power adapter back in, the internal battery should be re-enabled. You can put the bottom cover back on, reinsert the external battery, and now we have a perfectly functional T440S. It can be put to good use, or you can give it to somebody else to enjoy. Like I said, this process works on many newer ThinkPad models, and I'll leave a list in the description of all the models that I know this works for. Hopefully, I was able to help you make replacing the display in your ThinkPad a little bit less stressful. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.